Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanna to talk about a very ordinary baking step that we can almost take for granted. I'm talking about creaming the butter and the sugar and why exactly we have to do this for so many cookie and cake recipes. So let's check out the science of creaming the butter and sugar. If you love seeing cakes and cookies that have just this huge rise in the oven, that actually comes back to this first step we're talking about today, creaming the butter and sugar. And that's because this creaming step, what you're doing is actually beginning to incorporate air. Because we take that softened butter and either you use an electric mixer or maybe with a spatula, you smash it and bash it against that bowl. What you're doing is incorporating these tiny air bubbles. And if you pay attention, you can see this happening because your mixture, it actually increases in volume because you're incorporating air. And it also has a color change. If you look at your stick of butter, it's this bright yellow. But after you've creamed butter, it has more of a pale hue. And these are both good signs you're incorporating air bubbles. Now, you could try to just use butter only to incorporate air, but what helps the process is actually adding sugar crystals. Now, the reason that sugar really helps to cream or aerate that butter is if you look at sugar crystals, they're these really irregular and jagged shaped, which means they act sort of like a shovel and dig out areas of the butter for air to be incorporated. So if we add a half cup of sugar, we've just added like a ton of tiny little shovels or blades to help dig out holes and incorporate those air bubbles. And creating these air bubbles during creaming is so important because chemical leaveners, that's your baking soda, baking powder, things that help um, aerate the dough, they can only make existing air bubbles bigger. They cannot create their own air bubbles. So you have to do a good job creaming your butter and sugar to make sure you have air bubbles that your chemical leaveners can then enlarge in the oven. And this is exactly how you get a good rise during baking. It's really that initial creaming step that leads to a really good rise. Now the final texture of your cookie or cake, whatever you're baking is really dependent on how much it rises while it's in the oven, which means it's really dependent on how well you initially creamed the butter and sugar. So if you want a final texture of, let's just say a cookie, you want that cookie to be fluffy and light, you need to make sure during the creaming of the butter and sugar that you're really certain you incorporated air very well, that you are very efficient because that gives you that good rise during baking and your cookie texture with all those small air bubbles throughout the cookie, permeating the cookie, when you bite into that, it'll feel fluffy and airy and light because of all those air bubbles. But the opposite is also true. If you do a bad, bad job creaming the butter and sugar, you won't get a good rise during bake. And when you bite into this final baked good, you'll notice it's a more compact. It's like a very heavy bite. So if you want, you know, that airy fluffy texture, you have to make sure you start the recipe the right way and cream the butter and sugar. All right, well that about wraps it up for why creaming the butter and sugar is so important to a ton of baked goods. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've made it this far, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit that little bell icon so you're notified next time I post a new video. I'll talk to you next time.